who knows one day you might open up a camp to help people fish oh my gosh <laughs> before his injury before his injury he's actually got a plant business plan that he had wrote out that he wanted to have a wilderness ther- wilderness therapy camp for those that were depressed for those that needed needed a path for those that had brain injuries this is before he even had a brain injury wow and i didn't know this either christian i promise i didn't <laughs> This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. (laughs) Hi, and welcome to Life Rewired. I'm Rob. Ashley is not here today. She will be back next week. Joining me today in the program is Joe and Christian Lichardi. Hello, guys. Hello, Rob. How you doing, buddy? I'm great. How about yourselves? Doing well. Great. So Christian, Joe actually contacted me and told me a little bit about your brain injury. Um, Yours was much more severe than mine was. And I applaud you and thank you so much for being here. And I am so pleased to see your journey. So um, who wants to start? Can we start with you, uh, Christian? How, How the accident happened? No. Sign it's in fact. Well, so he wants you to explain kind of what happened. Yeah. And as we go, Rob, if you want me to fill in, um, yeah. Well, however you want it to go, I'll let you take the lead and and go from there. But if I need to interject, I'll help him out. So absolutely, yeah. Anytime that you can help him out, go for it. Okay. Okay. So what happened? How did your what happened? What happened? Tell a little bit about yourself before your injury. Oh, I was. Um, heading to Colorado to uh, live at small town. And what did you do in the small town? Uh, playing football. Yeah, I was a Division One football player. Yeah. I decided awesome. to uh, wait three years uh, uh, for... Okay, I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, that's not that's not important. But you were a Division One football player yeah. before the injury. Then what happened? Then um, a sudden, I woke up. You you go you want me to help you? Yeah, yeah. Well, as you can see, he's got you know he's got aphasia, aphasia yeah. praxia, and and you know I can help him pull it along, but for the sake mm-hmm. of your your listeners, I'll will help it. I want you to help me as well. Okay. okay. You're not going to sit quiet. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. Um, yeah. So he played football for 15 years. He was a division one uh, football player was on scholarship and he, uh, he started in November of 2015. He started developing these headaches, excruciating mm. headaches. I'll back up a second. He actually in April of that year, he decided to stop playing football. He wanted to be an NFL player and he was, you know, God had given him some major talents and gifts, but he decided to stop because of the concussions that he's had along the way. And there were over, how many concussions do you think? Oh, freaking 15 at least. Yeah, at least 15 concussions during his years. Wow. Of so he decided to save his head, yeah. right? And stop playing. Well, he didn't, he didn't play that year. So in November of 2015, he started experiencing these excruciating headaches, not like a normal headache, not like a, uh, you know, migraine headache. These were debilitating headaches. And mm. um, he actually went to, in Colorado, he went to the ER. Nine times. Uh, seven times in Colorado. Oh. Uh, I actually went to, I drove out and I went with him to number five, six, and seven. They finally ad- admitted him for a day for observation. They did a CT scan, MRI scan, none of them with contrast. They thought, well, maybe he's got meningitis or viral meningitis. And then the head neurosurgeon said, no, or the neurologist said, no, I don't think it's meningitis or viral meningitis, but they loaded him up on antibiotics and pain meds and steroids just to help calm him down. So the headaches subsided. Masking. Right. They masked it. Yeah. Headaches subsided. 
I left to come back to California. He drove from Colorado to California on that Thanksgiving day to surprise us. It was a total surprise. Uh, and along the way, he was communicating with his sister, his older sister, that he didn't think he could make it because his head was just rubbing. It was bad, right? Oh, wow. He didn't goodness. Think, he didn't think he could make it. He came out for Thanksgiving. We went to dinner and he just, he didn't eat. We knew something was wrong. And that night the headaches, the screaming, I mean, he literally was screaming, started happening oh, again. Wow. And so the next morning we took him to a local ER with a big hospital thinking, okay, this hospital is big. They'll, they'll be able to handle it. They did the same thing. They just wanted to give him pain meds. They kept, they kept saying it's post concussion syndrome. That's what they kept saying. It's post concussive mm. syndrome. And he kept saying, this is not, <laughs> no, this is literally not. Absolutely. No. So Saturday went, um, I was on a Saturday, he's, you know, with some pain and screaming all day. And next morning again, we went to ER and once again, they were going to send him home. And I just, wow. that's when dad just like, really, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, Blow it up. not sending my boy home again. I said, yeah. you have to figure this out. I said, you've got to figure this out. Like, well, what do you want us to do? I don't care. Just, you have to figure this out. So they did a spinal tap on him. They admitted him that night. My wife actually stayed the night and that's when things turned for the worst. Oh, um, wow. Apparently that night is when he had probably his first stroke. Um, Goodness. Kind of what happened and I'll, sh I'll shorten it up. He had a sinus infection that apossified his frontal sinuses apossified so they couldn't drain out. So really? the only place in our body where blood flows to back and forth is from our, into our, from our, our head, from our, into the, into the, the area between dura. the, yeah, the skull and the dura, it flows back and forth. And so for yeah. 30 days, he had this monster growing in there and that Goodness. section kept against, kept pressing against the dura. And finally that night on November 30th, it broke through and just literally decimated his brain. And my wife Goodness. was there when he just, he just, you know, that's when we knew something was wrong. Lost consciousness, not lost consciousness, wow. wasn't able to communicate and zero. Yeah. And that's when things Mind really got bad. Um, we had a neurosurgeon who, you know, this, that, that yeah, just, you know, we had different opinions and mm -hmm. thank God that one of the critical doctors said, would you like a second opinion? Um, because at that point his brain was dying. Um, yeah. So, in the, you know, ICPs, intracranial pressures, is what regulates the pressure from our uh, fly, spinal fluid into our brain. So the fluid goes in and comes out, goes in and comes out. When we sneeze, it goes up to 20. It's normally around 9 to 10, but when we sneeze, it goes up to 20. The body cannot sustain, the brain cannot live over 40 ICPs. His went up to 85. Wow. He actually suffered tonsillar hernia herniation which is a brainstem herniation, which cut his, he couldn't breathe anymore. So they put him on, you know, they obviously put him on oxygen machine and everything else. So, I mean, <clears throat> so he was rushed into surgery the next day. There was a, another neurosurgeon said, look, I don't care who does the surgery. He needs to be, he's going to die if you don't get him in. So they removed uh, his left flap, part of his, you, you saw in the video, yeah. you know, how much was removed. Which at this point, they still didn't know what the infection was. They still had no idea where the infection came from. And it wasn't until much later on, because he transferred to a bigger hospital nine days after he was in this local hospital, which was still a big hospital. Yeah. They found out that the bacteria was called strep A. It's a flesh eating bacteria. Goodness. Yeah. That, that's what, uh, that's what it was from the sinus infection that was blocked. And of course, because of the lack of oxygen, he suffered four strokes, all left, all left frontal lobe, wow. which affects his balance, his cognition, his speech. Um, he's actually totally he has no peripheral vision from the left side of his uh, from here, and he's got zero peripheral vision on his right side, so he cannot see. Well, he's looking at you now, but he can't see anything to his right at all. Goodness. The bottom the bottom line is that they basically said that he would never walk, talk see again showed them didn't you <laughs> yep <laughs> showed <it them. laughs> it's powerful what god can do he's yeah. giving you a great testimony christian yeah yeah and, and and 
like you said, Rob, when they told us our son was dying, my wife and I went into the church chapel and the, the hospital. The hospital. Yeah. So, sorry. Thank you. My wife's in the background. <laughs> the hospital chapel. <laughs> and we just, you know, we just claimed it that he would, that God was, you know, not let the enemy take him. And we started singing praise songs. And so we focused on not where he was, but what God saw where he would be. Mm-hmm. And we believe that you know, because of our faith. That is awesome. He's here today. Yes. You know, so many of us sit back and play the why me game. Yeah. And your attitude and your faith is the biggest thing that will get you through the storms. He didn't promise that he wouldn't go let the storms come. Correct. He promised he'd get us through them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I am so glad that he had a faithful father and mother to, to get on their knees and pray for him. Yeah. And you want to know something at early on, I asked my wife this question. I said, why did he choose us to go through this? And I remember her words so clearly. She said, he didn't choose us. He created us for this moment. Hmm. And when she said that, Rob, you don't know my background. It clicks. Yeah. My entire background, my whole life has been built around. I was a national level bodybuilder. We own nutrition centers. We own personal training facilities. I was a professional coach for motocross and athletes. I spent, you know, my wife and I had a massive organization where I was like the motivational speaker. So all, and when she said that it was all those things that I had done in my past had shown me God was preparing me for him and this Mm -hmm. time now. So that is amazing. Everything that we had been through in our life and everything that I'd done in my life wasn't for that moment. It was for this moment now. And look, for those that have brain injury, it's not easy. It's not all roses. It's not easy. People don't see the struggles that, he has that we have that we have to deal with so he has really bad the ptsd the fight or flight right <clears throat> especially because he can't see on his right side and you know, <clears throat> it's, you know it's it's a struggle it, it definitely is a struggle oh and yeah yeah through the grace of god and his preparing christian of being a football player for 15 years that he knows how to fight he knows how not to give up you know it's really it's it's like just a few moments ago before we came on he was walking with his socks which He doesn't do. He always has to have solid footing. He was walking with the socks after a shower, just going back and forth. And I was like, whoa, what the heck? So (laughs) eight and a half years later, right? He's still pushing the boundaries of what the medical world said he would never do. Keep pressing, Christian. Keep pressing. Thank you. You You know, since I hit my head, I have had a migraine level headache every single day since then it's been four years oh my gosh and the the biggest question that i get is how do you keep going Mm. it's not easy and christian you know what i'm saying it is not easy to keep going and there's a lot of days and i bet you're the same way as i am there's a lot of days you don't see this mask that i got on you don't know the battle that's going on behind the smile (laughs) I know, Mm. trust me. Mm. But I decided early on, I can let this affect me or I can control it. That's right. And that's why I said, no, I'm going to keep pressing. You know, a lot of people can't work after a brain injury. And one day I might get to that point, who knows. But until then, I'm just going to keep pressing. That's all I can do. Yeah. And that's, you know, and that's the thing that those who suffer, I mean, there's all different levels of TBIs, you know, obviously his is, even though he had concussions before, which is TBIs, he had the ABI, which is acquired brain injury. Mm -hmm. For those that are out there that struggle, you know, yes, the struggle, like you just said, is real. And yet you, you, you have to make a conscious choice every single day of what are you going to do with what you've been dealt with. You have two choices. Mm-hmm. You can say, Are there woe, woe is me, which there's going to be yeah. those times because he has those times too. You can say, woe is me and this sucks. Or, you know, 
Goya, get off your backside, right? Get off your backside and make the best of what you can do. Right. Right. And, you know, it's, you know, he's, he's 30, oh, 31. He's my only son. Right. And yeah. life has been pretty much taken away from him from what his future could have been in my mm -hmm. eyes, right in the flesh. God has different plans. Right. And, and yet, you know, he and himself, my wife and I, we're in constant therapy with him every day, whether it's speech therapy, whether it's like him walking on the floor, it's something that we do every single day with them. And we're always looking for ways to continue um, moving him forward. I mean, he's still in therapy. Physical, how many times? Three times a week we go? Yeah. Three times a week. He does what's called stretch lap to keep himself limber. Oh, my freaking. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he gets I can't wait to, to, get back, oh. get back to it. Woo. Yeah, we've been in Montana for two and a half months. So he well, can't wait to get back to it. Yeah. Now. I'm like uh, my, my butt and my. Your hamstrings. Yes. Your hamstrings. Yes. Your hamstrings are tight. <laughs> but, you know, we're always looking for ways to, to help move him along. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's important to always, always remember that, you know, yeah, you might not be who you were before, but that doesn't mean you can't make the best of who you are now. Right. You know, you have the biggest cheerleaders there on your side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it great to have a loving mom and dad to, to be there right for you? Yeah. Thank you, dad, or mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you touched on something earlier about the aphasia. Did that come in after, after. the concussions? No. Nope. nope. So it came in after the sinus infection and all that? Yeah, it's when, the, when, the, when he had the strokes. Wow. Yeah. Now, I don't know if, I don't know a lot about aphasia, which I should probably learn because I do have a touch of it myself. We have, my wife calls it Robbie's. She Robbie. says I'm fluid in Robbie's <laughs> because oh, I'll course, say, yeah. will you give me a, uh, a, uh, an ear stick and okay. she'll know, I mean, a, a, uh, Q-tip. <laughs> so, yeah. oh. These little words that I'll come up with and she uh, always, and mom and dad, you can probably attest to this. Do you find yourself, you know exactly what he's talking about after so many years? Yes. And, and yet we, we try to, and we do it probably, I would say 80% of the time, we make him figure it out. We make him, okay. we, don't, we won't, we try not to speak for him. We try not to, we allow him to stumble, right? You know, yeah. like stumble and fall, <laughs> stumble and fall with his words. And then we have, we have, now is that what you really want to say? And he says, no. And so we, we, you know, I'll use the word force to have his brain figure it out. You know, if those wires are missing, let's try to reconnect them, you know, with his speech. Yeah. And, and so, uh, but yes, we know exactly what he's wanting or is asking for, for the most part. What, huh? He says if it goes on too long, you yeah. can't come up with it. Now. Yeah, if it goes on too mm. long, right, then we'll then help step him in. along. Yes. Help yeah. Him. I have found that there's times that if I just, slow my brain down and just think I can get it to come out. But sometimes there's no getting over that hurdle. Yeah. And the more I try, the more frustrated I get. <laughs> and my yeah. wife will be like, uh, do you mean a Q-tip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, so. yeah, we, 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 uh, we totally understand that. And, you know, that's why we, we'll let them try for, you know, however long it is. And then we'll help them along to get the right word out or the right phrase or whatever he's asking for. Yeah. Now, Christian, whenever that happens to you, do you find yourself stutter? Or is that just me? No, not really. Not really? Yeah. I'll trip over a word, and no matter how hard I try to, to get it to come out, my wife will be like, oh, I know what you're saying, but that's not good enough for me. <laughs> i got to get that word out, and I'll just sit there, and, 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 and. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's funny. It's not funny, but it is. <laughs> yeah, he'll replace it with a word that really doesn't belong there. Oopsie, right? He'll, yeah, <laughs> he'll replace it with a word that you know he knows that, and even he knows because then he'll laugh about it because <laughs> he knows that's not the right word I want. I'm trying to think. There was something recently that I could not get the word. I think it was mower, 
Lower. And the the word did not belong in the sentence at all. Like, um, I'm just going to make up an example because I can't remember what the situation was. But it was like, I wanted my wife to give me my wallet. And I would say, will you hand me my mower? And <laughs> she said that all day long, I was replacing keywords with mower. <laughs> so you perseverate too. So what? I, what is that? I, you're oh, teaching me something. Awkward. It's part of Broca's aphasia, which he has, and sounds like you have too. Part of it is persever. Help, they'll perseverate on one specific word, and then it gets stuck. If it's mower, mo you know, it gets stuck. And then, oh, you know, a lot of it was when early on, as I mean, because he couldn't say one word for a year. I mean, uh, no, two years. Well, I mean, let's just yes say he could no. say mom, dad, yes, but he had a hard, he couldn't put more than two or three words together for at least a year. But okay. and that's when they found out he would perseverate on one specific word, and no matter what, it would always come up as they're trying to ask him if he kept if the word if he needed to say no, but he had yes stuck in his mind. Gotcha. He would always say yes, yes. He, okay. Even though he was like trying to get no out, it would always come out yes. So, so it kind of becomes like a filler word. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and and yes, like a filler word, and and you know. To keep the, the way that he learned to start talking was to start singing. Oh. So his ABCs were the first thing. He would sing through his ABCs. He would sing his name. He would spell out his name by yeah, singing but... it. Right? He would sing it. And, and uh, you know, automatics, right? That's another way that he started to learn to speak. Salt and pepper. Right. Up and down. Right and left. He still doesn't know his right. I know. So he still gets what? that messed up. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so his, you know, he's got a severe case of aphasia, which also has, you know, the perseveration in there that it's not, I mean, do you think you still have a lot of perseveration? Not, uh, rarely. Yeah, rarely. Yeah. Really? Well, that wor a word gets stuck and then it always comes up. But that's like you said, the mower as an example, that's perseveration. Yeah. Now, when you do it, do you realize what you're doing or right away? <laughs> okay. Cause I didn't know that I was doing this. It had to be brought to my attention. Whoa. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it, it, so that's not, that's not <laughs> right. right. That's not right. I, yeah. Cause I'm a little bit ADHD as well. Oh, so yeah. my mind, I could be going one direction and all of a sudden it's <laughs> over here. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'll answer my wife for something that happened that she might have asked me four hours ago. And I'll say, yeah, I think we should do that. And she's looking at me like, we should do what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. We're talking about this TV That's show. That's funny. <laughs> so. so how did yours, your, I know what this is about you, about him, but how did yours happen? Mine actually happened from just a freak accident. I was feeding my fish on my last break because I do work from home. And I was on a time crunch. So I went out there, fed the fish, come back in and I have a bee allergy. Okay. I'm extremely allergic to bees. So I'm very gun shy when I see one, as I was opening the door, one flew by my head and I did that knee jerk reaction. I pulled the door into my head and I got a cut from here to here, three inches. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Now you tell me this isn't a God thing. My wife was home that day. She normally wouldn't have been. She had lost her job of over two zero years. Wow. And my numbers were affected too. So okay, one, two, three, four, five is fine. But when I get up to <laughs> past nine, it's one zero, one one. That's right. That's good. So she had she would not have been home that day. And I would have freaked out. I don't know what I would have done. I might have drove myself to the hospital. That's what I'm saying. We never understand what God's putting and yeah. in our past and you're right. at the time it doesn't make sense but had she been at work i might not be here today because who knows what i would have done yeah 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 well, it's, uh, we had uh you know throughout this journey and you know he spent six months in the hospital there was many <clears throat> we call them god moments that we saw how his hand was upon our son i mean so many different times and i you know from you know, when he was in ICU, he was in ICU for 45 days. And at one point, a uh, respiratory therapist came in, filling in for somebody else. And he he looked at something that another respiratory therapist would not have seen. 
Uh, his sound, that's right, his breathing, because he was on, he was, tra he was uh, at that point, was he trached at that point? No, he wasn't no, trached yet. He heard a sound in the line. Oh, he heard a sound in the line, right? Not coming from him, but in the line, hmm. which found out that he was developing a pneumonia, pneumonia in his lung. Oh, goodness. So, you know, and, and it just, he wasn't, that guy wasn't supposed to be there. His name was Joe. We remember his name, but so many different moments like that throughout throughout the time and in, in I had to give share this one one with you once he was transferred to the a bigger hospital a wife and I were sitting in the waiting room and this ge older gentleman was there I think his wife his wife was there Patrice his wife was in Jim? his wife was there Are you talking about Jim? no was that Jim was his name with the little boy yes his name was Jim his wife was having to think a transplant or something and the the gym went to go see his, his wife visit and my wife and I were waiting in the waiting room and this little boy, he was nine years old. He said to us, he goes, your son's going to be okay. We were like, excuse us. How did he say it, Patrice? Well, I told you your son is going to live. Yeah. He, we said, how do you know that? He goes, cause God told me your son's going to live and going to be okay. Mm. Or like, yeah, I okay. mean, and, and you know, we've never seen this kid before, and and the wisdom from this little nine-year-old kid was just amazing. And as I said, you know, it's just we had so many moments that God kept saying, "I got this," right? Yeah. Go ahead. What? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> so speak when you want to speak. Okay. okay. Yeah. I want to hear you too. Anytime, chime in. <laughs> What, what would it, you like to say to somebody who's, you know, who's had a brain injury that maybe is struggling? Keep your head up. Mm. Push to the limit. Yeah, push to the limit. Yes. Always try and push. Yeah. Mm hmm yeah. yeah. That's the key. Yeah. That is the key. Attitude and drive. That's right. And, and a lot of prayer. Love and love, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it's important to have a great caregiver too. I I will give my wife props. She's, mm. she's awesome. Mm. I, I could be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for her. Yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome to have that support system, as you said. And we've been told so many times that, you know, especially while we were in the hospital that, the, you know, a lot of families don't have that support system. And I'm like, no. how's that even possible? You know, yeah. he's my son and I would give everything, my last breath for him. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah, I mean, you know, it was an early retirement for me and my wife, but, you know, it is what it is. God has prepared us for it and way in advance. Mm -hmm. We didn't know. And, you know, we're living life that we didn't think about. And, you know, we, we have, a, we're, we're blessed, man. We, you know, we travel, we have a nice motor home and we, you know, we winter here in Southern California. He's got a property now in Montana, right on the river that he fishes out of. We go, we, we hire a, a fishing guide for him. And that's one thing that, you know, he thought he would never. It's my passion. What's your passion? Uh, fishing. What kind of fishing? Uh, trout fishing. Oh, what kind of fishing? Oh, what, what? Tinkara. But what what's is a Tinkara? Style? Oh, what's, what's the style? What's it called? It's not fishing with a reel. It's called fly fillers fly fly fishing oh yeah. okay yeah you know i've never done that maybe one day yeah. you'll have to teach me yeah because he's right side impaired right <clears throat> and although mm -hmm. you know he can utilize his right arm and you know it's is you know when work he's got now a robotic arm and hand that really is helping him to get some mo mo motion back but he can't do the normal fly with two hands so he has what's called a tenkara rod which is a Japanese fly rod, just like really? a fly rod. It's, it's a collapsible, collapsible fly rod. It has the exact same motion, but there's no reel on it. So his, his rod is 12 feet long. His yeah. rod is 12 feet long. The line is 13 feet long. And then the leader is another three feet. So he's casting it out 16 feet, just like a no, normal fly rod. And this guy's wow. been slaying them. He's been, he's, so one of his passions was fly fishing that he thought he would never be able to do again, right? Yeah. How are you doing it now? Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Boy, you got me beat. I can't even catch fish that drive through at Long John Silver's. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's like me. I, you know, but this kid, this you know, the the fishing guide that he has up there in Montana has really done a great job with them. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it's beautiful out in Montana too. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What it's... a beautiful scenery. Yeah. I've seen photos and I'm one of these people that when I see something, I always think this photo is, cannot be doing it justice. Yeah. 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 So if you see our, his, his prayers for Christian Facebook page or, you know, my page where we post a lot of stuff over the summer from our travels out there and just the beautiful scenery. It is, even though you can see it looks beautiful, you know, but you know, so picture this in the morning we go out and have my wife and I go out, and have coffee. He's got an acre and a half and we sit there. It's right along. He's got 150 feet of the Clark Fork River and we sit there and watch the bald eagles just fly by. It's just, it's like, wow. Incredible. Be sure to send me anything that you would like to have linked to this, to his pages. Okay. Any YouTube channels, any websites, anything like that you want to be, uh, for people to get in contact with him. And okay. I will link it on the YouTube channel. Well, All right. we'll definitely do that. And, you know, I know that his, I feel that we haven't done his story justice and done what God has done for him because we just haven't, I know there's other channels to expose, not so much of what, um, wow, am I getting that close? Let's see. No. All right. Hey, honey, what? can you bring me my, my charger? Um, you know, his story can really help a lot of people in believing yeah. that. You know, and we haven't really exposed it that much. I mean, he has like 10,000 followers on on his fan page, but we haven't you know, exposed it enough to where I think more people would can say, well, I, that's me, and I have, he's giving me hope. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Um, I think you will find what the purpose is going to be, or it will find you. It's going to happen. I believe that. Oh, I like, well, that's good. I never thought about that. That's good. I like that. Because when I first had my injury, the first, gosh, maybe year, I would lay in bed every night and I would get on YouTube and I was looking for what I'm doing now. And I couldn't find it. All I found were doctors saying, well, this is what a brain injury is. People that don't have a brain injury. And I would just, I would pray every night, God, give me purpose for this pain. You know, there's got to be purpose out there for some reason. And I was in a lot of therapy and I told my therapist one night, I said, I go every night cause I couldn't sleep. I don't know if it affected your sleeping patterns or not Christian, but it did mine, but I could not sleep at night and I would just search. And finally the therapist looked at me and she goes, then why don't you do it? Never even crossed my mind. And that was like God slapped me in the face going, hello, I've been trying to get you to do this and you're just ignoring it. <laughs> yeah, that's... So I'm like, why not? Yeah. Yeah. He uses the least likely people. Yeah. And, and interesting that you say that because <clears throat> there's one word that over these eight and a half years that I probably have said less than the fingers on my hands is the word why, right? why right because i think the i think those that struggle with the why right that are mm -hmm. always asking why me why me why we that's you know you're living in that past moment which will keep you there versus them moving forward but i remember one of the times early on in this recovery um i had that moment where i said you know why is why did this happen and it was in an instant rob that the lord showed me a picture of heaven opened up and I this is what I saw he said you don't know the reason why now but as he opened his arms and turned there was literally thousands and thousands of people he said this is why Ooh. yeah that is deep yeah that, is that deep. was the that was a heck of a moment yeah, yeah. You know, that's one thing that I've, I've learned early on. I, I never, I never got stuck on the why me, why me, but 
I got stuck on the, okay, this happened instead of why, how, how can I use this to help others? Yeah. Look what you're doing. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Well, and that's, I know there's, like you said, there's the purpose will come and I think there's gotta be something here for his story mm -hmm. to help others. Yeah. Who knows? One day you might open up a camp to help people fish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> before his injury, before his injury, he's actually got a plan, business plan that he had wrote out that he wanted to have a wilderness, ther wilderness therapy camp for those that were depressed, for those that needed, needed a path for those that had brain injuries. This is before he even had a brain injury. Wow. And I didn't know this either, Christian. I promise I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeez. So, uh, so you might yeah. want to explore that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think you got your purpose, my friend. Yeah. 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 It can be done, man. Yes. Right? And look how yeah. far you have come. I mean, it, I it's know. amazing. It's, I watched that video. Thing. What? I said, I watched your video. Your dad sent me your video. Watch your story. And your story. Yeah. Powerful. The yeah. only word I can describe it is powerful to see where you were and well, sitting in front of me now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, and I'm sure you can attest to this, right? The medical world has their book. My wife and I always said, God doesn't go by the books of, of you. He's got his own right. book. Right. Right. Amen to that. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> wow. Christian, you have, you really inspired me today and I, I cannot thank you enough for doing this. Thank you. No, yeah. I appreciate you having us on. Yeah. And I see big things in your future, my friend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Don't, yeah. don't let it slip through your fingers. Yeah. Take take hold of it and take charge of it. It's yours. Okay. Yep. Yep. hundred yeah. percent. We, we, we agree too. Yeah. Yes. Well, this is normally the part of the program where I throw it to Ashley to kick us out of here. And I'm, I'm the worst YouTuber because I always forget to do the like and subscribe stuff. So yeah. don't below. forget. Yeah. Link below. Make sure you visit Christian's uh, YouTube pages, uh, Fan Help page, at fan prayers, page, prayers for Christian with an S, prayers with an S, F O R, Christian. And yeah, it's make sure you visit Christian. that. It will be linked below, and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. I think I've got everything. So until next week, this is Life Rewired. Life Rewired.